When I checked the card details, it was my old card, the one that the bank said I should destroy. And this person had used it to pay for Uber in London at 4 a.m. <laughs> Scammers are everywhere, but most especially in the UK. It's the cost of living crisis. More people than ever are being targeted by scammers, with reports finding that Britain is the fraud capital of the world, with over 40 million people targeted so far this year. The UK scammers are quite clever. They're not like the low-budget, cheap uh, scammers that you see in my comment section. Those scammers that create a fake YouTube channel using my name and my profile picture, pretending to be me, and directing people to WhatsApp and Telegram, asking people for money and promising them jobs. Those scammers are cheap as low as and clever scammers these uk scammers are way smarter by the way if you see any comments in the comment section anybody using my name and my profile picture directing you to a whatsapp number or a telegram group i'm asking you to give them money so that they'll give you a job i will never do that if i want to give out my number it will be on my screen okay and you hear me say it in a video that's just by the way so if you're in the uk or you're thinking of relocating to the uk right there are some common scams that okay in the uk that you need to be aware of so that you don't fall victim to these scams okay maybe you're saving up money for a project or you're saving up money to buy a house and then you get scammed and then you lose all this money okay it happens quite a lot and don't think you're too smart and then you can't fall prey because like i said these scammers are very 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 clever and people fall victim people fall prey to their scams all the time like thousands of people if not millions of people fall victim to scams all the time okay like this lady here who was recently scammed of over twenty thousand pounds twenty thousand pounds through a type of scam known as number spoofing which is also becoming quite popular i'll talk about it into detail and how you can prevent yourself from being scammed this way like she was so in today's video i'll be talking about the seven popular scams that you can easily fall victim to or fall prey to in this uk here there's like the seven popular scams or the seven common scams that get people all the time so i've actually taken a few lessons from some scammers like hash puppy hash puppy has actually sat me down to educate me on how they scam people so today i want to tell you all what hash puppy told me and so that we can prevent ourselves from being scammed if you don't know who hash puppy is google him okay so this video is probably sponsored by lemonade finance and uh, lemonade finance is a money transfer app that allows you to send money from the uk canada and the us yes so all my friends in the us now you can actually download lemonade finance using the link in the description to send money to 10 different african countries at no fee at all you can send money to ghana you can send money to nigeria to tanzania to uganda to rwanda to kenya to benin ivory coast at no transfer charge as a matter of fact if you send money using the referral code nanel you get 10 percent the money you're transferring back into your account so if you send 100 pound you get 10 pound back if you send 200 pound you get 20 pound back but it's capped at 50 pound okay so download lemonade finance with the link in the description send money now using lemonade finance and let me know what you think no transfer charge and the money goes instantly it's super convenient and very very reliable okay so thank you lemonade finance for sponsoring today's video now let me talk about like the very popular scum that i nearly fell for and that is the hmrc scum so if you're in the uk you already know hmrc but if you're not in the UK yet, HMRC is like the government organization that deals with the tax system in the UK. So for my, what happened to me was I got a text message stating that I am due for a tax refund. I was super excited. I was like, yeah, because these days the tax that they take is too much. I'm probably due for a refund. So I actually believed it. But they sent a text message and then they asked me to click on the link to input my details. So that is where I was like, mm. And another thing was my time, the number that sent the text message it was like somebody's mobile number so it's like why will hmrc send me a message using like a personal mobile number or something but these days these guys have gotten much much clever so now they do what we call the number spoofing so they can actually send you a message and then the text message will pop up as hmrc meanwhile it is not hmrc these days they don't even use the numbers anymore so what they do is that if they text you they can either say that they're due for a tax refund and then you need to input your details or sometimes they'll ask you to click on a link and answer some questions when you click on the link and then you give some details they can use that to you know steal money from your bank account or hack you later or whatever and sometimes to like they use the information they get from you to scam you later through like another type of scam known as a bank scam what happened to me was i contacted hmrc and then they told me that no they haven't contacted me so i was lucky okay so i ignored them and then they told me to contact my mobile network company to tell them that 
hackers are getting access to my number so that I can protect myself, blah, blah, blah. You ask yourself, how do they even get your number? Like, you know, sometimes we go on different websites and we input our numbers and sometimes we don't even care. Like, sometimes hackers can get access to this information that we put on different websites and use that to scam us later. Sometimes, you know, when you get like a delivery, it has your address, it has your number on it. Sometimes they're giving more details, okay? And then for me, like, whenever I get a parcel that has my name and my address and my number on it, after I receive the parcel, before I put the package in the bin, I always make sure I destroy the details. Like, I actually, like, tear it into pieces or soak it in water, you know, make it very difficult for you to read because people can actually get access to it and then use those details to scam you later. Because imagine if you get a call and then they say it's the HMRC and they'll ask you to confirm your name and log result that into you. You go like, yes, that's my name. They'll say, and your current address is blah, blah, blah. And they've already seen your address. So you go like, yeah, and your date of birth is blah, blah, blah. So you actually think it's legit. It's really HMRC, but it's not. Some colleague nurses have actually fallen victim to this. They were told that they are owing HMRC and that they need to pay back as soon as possible. They were given an account number to transfer money into me while it was not HMRC. So be very, very careful. If HMRC will contact you, they'll usually send you a letter to your address and they have this unique brown envelope. That's when you know that it's actually HMRC. I recently got a genuine letter from HMRC telling me that I was due for a refund. If you really want me to do a video on that, comment below in the description so that I'll know and then I'll do a video on that, okay? So the first type is the HMRC scam. Like you have to be careful if they say you're due for a refund or they can tell you that somebody is actually using your NI number to work so you are owing HMRC. Be suspicious of every text, every call or every email that has a link. Be suspicious. Be very suspicious of them. So the second type is the bank scams. As for this one, they actually got me. They actually got me, but luckily it wasn't so much money. So there was a time that my bank sent me a letter. I don't know if they sent me a letter or they sent me a notification in my bank app, something like that, saying that they felt like Frosters had gotten details of my card details. So they are sending me a new card. And when they send me the new card, I should destroy the old card as that using the new card, okay? So the new card came and I just started using the new card and I forgot to destroy the old card or go into my bank app and report a stolen or report the damage i didn't do that so apparently that old card was active and my new card was active as well so i started using the new card for like weeks or like even months okay and one dawn it was around 2 a.m or 4 a.m i woke up from my sleep to use the toilet i was literally on the wc i swear then i saw a pop-up on my phone saying that 16 pound or 14 pound it was somewhere around there but it was less than 20 pound had been deducted from my account from uber it looked like i was paying for uber in london like somewhere in london i was literally on the wc how how on earth was I able to pay for Uber with my old card? When I checked the card details, it was my old card, the one that the bank said I should destroy. And this person had used it to pay for Uber in London at 4 a.m. So what I did was I quickly called the bank and the banks are usually very, very good. If you call them at odd hours, if it's relating to fraud, they are going to pick up the call and then give you advice. Like immediately, it doesn't matter the time you call. So far as it's related to fraud, they're going to respond. So I called the bank at 4 a.m. to report that somebody had used my car to pay for Uber in London. I don't even live in London. And even in Northern Ireland, I don't take Uber. I've never taken Uber in Northern Ireland. I don't even take Uber. I drive like, so how on earth? And they advised that. I should should have reported the old card stolen when I started using the new card. So that means it was really true that scammers had gotten access to that bank card details and then they were using it. So imagine if I was asleep at the time or imagine if I didn't get that pop-up notification. This person could have used it to purchase for something that was much more expensive and they didn't use the card immediately. They used it like a month or two after the bank had given me the new card. Okay. So that means these people had the card details and they're just waiting for the right time to strike. So imagine if they had paid for something that was like a thousand pounds. The bank never refunded the 16 pound or whatever so my advice is that first of all anytime you move always make sure you update your address details in your bank app okay for so for instance when the bank sent me the new card if i had not updated the bank of my correct address let's say if i had moved i would have missed it you understand and whoever received that if the person was a bad person could have used that to hit me okay because the bank will send the card and then they will send the password or the pin later so imagine if this had gotten into contact with like a wrong person that's one another thing is that it's always advisable to have a bank app on your phone so that you can actually monitor your transactions so once in a while don't be like me just go through your bank transactions and then see and if there's anything unfamiliar you just contact your bank immediately and then also always ask your bank to you know send you alerts okay whenever there's a transaction or anything going on whether there's money coming in or money going out make your settings in such a way that you get pop-ups on your phone so that let's say even if you are busy and then you see a pop-up that you just bought something and you know very well you've not bought anything and money has been deducted from your account you can quickly report that card stolen or call your bank and then they can 
can help you out you understand if you have any old cars that you're not using always 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 make sure that you destroy it and then you report it stolen in your app and let's say you misplaced your card in a day or you just realized you can't find it the best thing to do is just report it stolen so that the person is not able to use it don't try to say no i'm not going to look for it what if it's actually really stolen okay when it comes to bank accounts comes as well one thing i also do is that i have two bank accounts okay let's say barclays i have like two barclays accounts okay one has majority of my money okay and the other one is what i use for transactions with the one that keeps the majority of my money okay i'm saying majority i still have one million <laughs> with the one that has majority of my money i don't even have a card for it so if you should get access to my card you're only getting the one that has the money that i'm using for that time period maximum thousand pounds is what you're going to find so if you scam me you're probably going to scam me that amount that is in it and whenever you're going over drafts the bank will definitely send you a message to tell you that you purchased something more than what was in your account so you're going to go overdraft and the bank is actually going to let you know that you've gone overdraft so you'll be notified like this lady that lost over twenty thousand pounds they actually took whatever amount that was in her account and they also actually took a loan in her name like they went overdrafts okay but she was lucky she was able to get the money back but for most of us you might not be able to get it back another thing is if you're buying anything from a website that you're not so familiar with it's best you buy through like a secured um third party like paypal or buy with your credit card usually when you buy through like paypal or credit card should anything go wrong you're likely to be able to retrieve it and when you buy anything online and you're not really sure about it the website how the website looks don't put in your card details you can get your details from other websites or other places and they can actually pretend to be calling you from the bank they'll tell you that you've been targeted by frosters so they're giving you an account number for you to transfer your money into that safe account never do that when you get such a call if possible don't even use that same phone call your bank or wait till after 10 minutes after the call has ended and verify from your bank do not transfer any money to any safe account when they tell you that you are targeted by scammers so you, they've withdrawn some money from your account you need to keep the rest safe by the bank will never do that and whenever your bank calls they'll never ask you for that three digit code at the back of the card that number that three digit code at the back of the card is extremely important you need to be careful you don't give it out just like that and that's another reason why you need to be careful when you're buying things over the phone so for instance for me when i'm buying heating oil they actually ask me whether i want to pay for it over the phone if you're paying for it over the phone that means you give them the card number and they give them the three digit code at the back as well so imagine if this person is not a legit person they can actually save the card details and later use it to scam you so be very very careful so guys another thing is never use public wi-fi to make financial transactions okay if you have to make any financial transaction where you have to input your bank details or whatever usually okay to be safe don't use public wi-fi and don't download any app on your phone that you are not sure about okay don't download any app because they can use all these means to get your information okay and hedge you or take your money also whenever you are selling your phone let's say you've used your phone for a while and you are selling it to somebody else please make sure you return the phone to the factory settings okay because even if you delete everything they can't still be able to trace some deleted stuff from the phone be careful like i said the first thing is be suspicious of every call every email or every text message that you get that is asking you to input details of any kind or asking you to click on any link okay and anytime somebody is like giving you sort of like pressure to pay for something is a huge red flag be careful okay guys if you're getting value just give me a thumbs up just give me a thumbs up to keep me going please okay now let's talk about postage scams so sometimes these scammers will also send you a text message saying that they are from royal mail or they are from amazon delivery or wherever you're supposed to get a mail or a parcel but when they came you were not there they need to re-deliver at a different date so click on the links to put your details do not do that don't fall for those things usually if it's amazon they're going to leave a card or if it's royal mail or wherever they're going to leave a card and tell you that they missed you so they're going to come at a later date to come for your parcel from their office so if you're really expecting something check from the app you bought the thing track the package from the app and if you realize that you really missed the delivery go to the office and don't fall for these things sometimes can actually spoon the phone number to make it look like it's really from royal mail or it's really from amazon delivery do not fall prey so this is also similar to the tv licensing scams you know in the uk you have to pay tv license for the mere fact that you own a tv you watch live videos you watch or you have a phone you watch live videos blah 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 that's what they used to fund the bbc and all that so you have to pay is mandatory okay if you don't pay it's an offense it's a criminal offense so people knowing that they would actually send you a text message saying that you've not been paying your tv license or tv license blah 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 so you're supposed to pay for it they give you a link like i said be suspicious of every link be suspicious of everything or every call that you get that's asking for your details be very suspicious and if you're not comfortable don't give your details 
details just yet go to the official website and contact them to find out the jobs comes so let's say you're looking for a job at indeed or wherever and then they tell you that your cv has been shortlisted for an interview they can actually conduct an interview and tell you that you've passed the interview like they'll they'll make everything look like legit okay and then they'll tell you that like they need to do your induction blah 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 so you need to pay an amount of money Hold on, that should let you know that there's something fishy. If an employer, a prospective employer, starts asking for money, it's a huge red flag. Know that it's probably a scammer, okay? That's what I always tell people. If you're coming to the UK, you're not supposed to pay any agency or any company any money for anything whatsoever. It's very likely that it's a scam, okay? So it doesn't matter if the site is genuine. Scammers can also post job adverts on these genuine websites as well, okay? So you have to be very, very careful. Don't pay anybody any money for a job in the UK. It is actually against the rules okay there was a time a company contacted me that they wanted me to advertise their company on my youtube channel and uh, i was a bit skeptical so i kept telling this guy to explain what it is he said it's like sort of like an app that helps you work from home they'll actually give you a task to perform and after you perform that task they'll pay you that makes sense right let's say tell you to go and um like a facebook video and send a screenshot that you actually like that video and then they'll pay you money or maybe you'll tell you to subscribe to a channel and then after you subscribe they'll pay you makes sense right because people want traffic on their site so it makes sense that they're paying people to do that but what made me suspicious was he was like but the people would have to make a, a commitment first they'll have to pay some money if you pay let's say 100 pounds you get i'm like wait hold on hold on you are saying that you're going to pay me for offering my services right why then do you need my money again before you pay me it just did not sit right with me. Around that time, I actually spoke to my Nigerian a friend of mine who's a Nigerian in Belfast as well. And he said, Nanel, have you heard about this thing? I'm actually cashing out big time. I'm making a lot of money from it. I've made this, this so far. I want to even invest 2,000 pounds. So when he kept telling me about it, I realized he sent me what it was about. And then I realized that mm, it's actually the same company that has contacted me. I'm like, but how is this genuine? Because they'll ask you to pay money to a certain account. And the account, the name on the account looked very, very weird. I'm like, why is this the company's name on the account number? So why is it? He said, no, 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 it works. I have friends who have even made 10,000 pounds from this. So I'm like, okay, when he told me I believed it because he's a smart guy, then I agreed to sign the contract. So the contract came, then I signed. But I sat on it again. I said, no way, this looks so wrong. And I don't want to come and advertise something on my channel. And many of my subscribers, thousands of people are going to download this app and invest money and something happens. So I'm like, no, something that asks you to pay money. And if you know me, I can be a bit stingy. Something that asks you to pay money, no so i kept delaying then i said let me talk to tochi so i asked tochi tochi was like they contacted me as well but i'm not so sure about this i don't think i'll do it hey hey the following week youtubers were doing videos saying that we apologize for advertising a fake brand what what i'm like oh my god so she sent me a video of a, a youtuber who was apologizing to her subscribers because she came to advertise a thing and her subscribers input money and they were all scammed they lost all the money they they could not trace the company anywhere and this person that i was communicating with suddenly stopped communicating with me imagine out of embarrassment i would have had to shut my channel imagine if i had let people to invest in this fake whatever these fake online job whatever work from home job these jobs comes out a lot be very careful if they are willing to pay you for your services i believe you don't have to pay any money for them to pay you for your services offer the services get paid there's no way you need to make a deposit first to show commitment those things don't make sense be careful okay now the covid scam so the covid scams there it was really popular when like the covid was quite severe so they'll tell you that go on the nhs website and input your details for the covid vaccine or whatever and what they do is they actually create a website that looks so much like the nhs website Website. but usually sometimes they are spelling mistakes or something like that so there was one popular one where um, they said that you need to get the um, a vaccine against the omicron variants blah 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 and then they'll tell you to go on the nhs website to input your details and it actually looked like the nhs website but they spelled omicron wrong they spelled it omicron okay it apparently was scammers okay so they actually to input your details and pay like one pound or something you think oh it's nothing or they'll just ask you to put in your details and they can use these details against you later and 
sometimes too, they create websites to mimic original website, like the NHS one that I'm talking about. It looks the same, but maybe DS is NHS and then maybe there's dot L or something, something weird, okay? ASOS.com, but their ASOS is double S at the end or something like that. You understand? So you have to be very, very observant, see whether it's like the real legit website of that company. Now the purchase comes. So let's say you buy something on Facebook Marketplace or you buy something from or wherever, the person actually advertises the product, you pay for it and you never receive it. It's quite popular. Don't buy stuff from websites that you are not so familiar with. Let's say they are doing massive discount. You've never even heard about them before. Everything looks so good to be true. They are selling an iPhone for hundred pounds or something like those things should make you question them like, mm, is this genuine? You want to buy something so cheap, you know that that's not the market price and then you put in your bank details, you pay for it and you never get it. Then this one, dating sites comes. I mean, in 2022, if you're a woman or if you're a man and you decide to date people or find love online, first of all, have you watched Tinder Swindler? Have you watched it? So if you allow yourself to be scummed by a lover, then it's on to you. Like these things, eh? I feel like that's the number one type of scum that can be easily avoided. No matter how much you want to love this person, be skeptical once they start asking for money. Be very, very skeptical. Even if you've met them before, be very skeptical. Do not just send your hard earned money. If it's 10 pounds, fine. If it's 20 pounds, fine. Anything more than that, please don't. Okay, um, that brings me to the end of this video. If you got value from this, please like this video. Please subscribe, okay? If you've been scammed before or you were nearly scammed, please comment below your experience so that we can all learn from this, okay? So we can protect our hard-earned cash, okay? okay thank you so much for watching. Bye.